Hi, I'm Colin with Blue Marble Consulting, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate SAP's project system scheduling. With project system scheduling, when you enter the plan dates of WBS elements manually, the plan dates of the activities are automatically calculated by the system. This determination of these plan dates of the networks is what's called scheduling. And I'll show you an example in Project Builder of how we can schedule. So we'll go into tr transaction CJ20N. I'll open up one of my projects and I'll just explain different elements within scheduling. So I'll open up this project. All right, and so a major part of scheduling revolves around relationships of the activities within networks. Without relationships, the result of the scheduling wouldn't be chronological sequence of activities. There wouldn't be any real format to the scheduling. So relationships of these activities are very important. So we'll take a look at these different relationships. So beginning with this camshaft activity, we can take a look at our different relationships. And from here, we can see that there are three different relationships regarding this particular activity. We have a finish start relationship with activity, the second activity. And so this is saying that once this camshaft activity right here is finished, we want to start this crankshaft activity since that's the second one in the, in the network. We also have two other different types of relationships. We have a start start with the fourth activity in this particular network, this 422 network. Um, this is the same one. So we're saying with this camshaft activity, we want this to start as, at the same time as this timing belt activity. And then finally, this last relationship at the bottom here is saying we want to start this camshaft activity at the same time as the first activity from this 425 network, which is this one right here. So we're saying we want the camshaft activity to start at the same time that this dashboard activity starts. Now, once you have these relationships set, you want to input the durations for what each of these activities will be. So to do that, we'll take a look at the overview for the particular activity here, and we'll enter in a duration. So for this one, we're saying we want this to take two days, entire, entire two days to complete this activity and then we'll start the next activity. We also have the same information for each of these. Uh, we have the crankshaft at two days, piston at 10 days, and then timing belt at five. And all of these different activities have durations. And so we'll see in a second on the Gantt chart what that looks like in terms of an overall layout. Now, earlier I mentioned that the system will automatically schedule activities in the system when you enter in plan dates. And that's because this checkbox defaults in. This is the schedule automatically checkbox. And when we have this ticked off, when we save the project, all of the activities and networks will be scheduled out when we save the project. And we won't have to manually go in and schedule these networks and activities. However, for this demo, I'm going to leave this unchecked and we're going to schedule these manually. Now, another major concept related to scheduling in project systems is the idea of float. There is two types of float. There's total float and free float. And I'll pull this up in one of our activities here, and we can view both of these in the dates tab. So here we have our total float and free float. Total float is the difference between, it's a time interval by which you can shift an activity from its earliest state without exceeding the end date that we have defined in the network header. And that would be this engine right here, the network. So that total float is just basically relating this particular activity to the network. Now free float is different in that it's the interval by which you can shift the activity from its earliest state without affecting the earliest state of the succeeding activities. That's how much you can shift this particular activity without affecting the next one in line. So that would be the crankshaft activity. And in addition, the activities that have um, with a total float that's smaller or equal to zero are regarded as time critical. And these will be the critical paths for the um, networks and for the project. We'll see those highlighted in red on the Gantt chart when we take a look at that in a moment. Next, I'll talk about scheduling types. So we have 
we'll open, we'll take a look at this network header here. And you see down here we have forward scheduling type. And so we have forwards, backwards, only capacity, and current date scheduling types. Forward scheduling, the system will schedule the network from the very first date and move forward from there. And that's used if you know the start date but don't know the end date. So if you're starting a project and you're not 100% sure on what the end date would be, or if you're not, if you don't know that, then you'd use the forward scheduling. On the other hand, backward scheduling starts from the last date of execution. Um, and so that's when you would know the end date, but not the start date. So for example, if you had, say, an agreed delivery date, and you say this is being delivered on this exact date, you would start with, you would use backwards scheduling for that project. But defaults, the default for networks is forward scheduling. So there are two different ways that you can schedule from this project builder. One way we can schedule from this actual screen. Um, and to do so, when you're scheduling and you want to schedule this entire project, you need to make sure that you click on the project definition up at the top before you schedule. Otherwise, you can just be scheduling one particular activity or one network while leaving the other ones unscheduled. So we're going to schedule the entire project here. So to schedule from the screen, we can just go to Edit. Oh, and we'll make sure that we have, again, that we're clicked on the project definition. But just for reference, um, we'll see here that the currently, before we actually schedule this, we have our basic start and end dates for this engine network beginning on the 9th of July and ending on the 22nd. So we'll go through and schedule, and we'll see that change after we schedule this entire project. Right, and we can see that scheduling was carried out. And we can also see that our basic start end dates have changed as well as our scheduled start and end dates. And that's because the system has scheduled this entire project along with all of our different activities. Now, I'm going to, going to back out and go back in so that we can see this effect on the Gantt chart. And we'll explore the Gantt chart a little bit as well. It helps to see the project a little bit differently. I think it can be a little bit more helpful. So I won't save that. And we'll go back into this project, which is unscheduled. And we'll open up the Gantt chart by using this icon right here. Again, to do this, if you want to look at this entire project, make sure that you clicked on this project definition up at the top here. And we'll take a look at the Gantt chart. So right now, we can see that this is all laid out. Um, we Nothing is scheduled right now. We'll see all of these different relationships indicated by the black lines and arrows um, be shifted to the right after we schedule. But we can also open this up. We can look at our basic start and finish dates, as well as other information for this particular project. And we can also bring in other fields here as well if we're trying to look at other information. So we can go up to this icon right here, and we can bring in things like basic free float. We can bring in durations um, and other information as well. Um, just bring this into the Gantt chart. Um, but for right now, we're just going to leave this as is. And also zoom in a little bit so that we can see these dates a little bit easier as well. So we'll go to this icon right here. And now we can kind of see the dates. They're a little bit smaller, but this allows us to view this a little bit better. So to schedule from this Gantt chart, we'll make sure that we have all of these checkboxes ticked off. So we'll click on this Select All icon right here. And similar to the last way that we scheduled, we'll go to our Edit menu path. We'll go to Functions, and then, then we'll go to Schedule. This will schedule everything in all these networks within the project. All right, and so here, I'll zoom back out so we can see this whole thing in one picture. But here we can see in the red is our critical path. And we can, a few different colors, and we can see what those are by bringing up the legend here. And we can also see the relationship. So this red icon right here has a start-start relationship with 
this activity right here as well as with this activity. So these three activities will all start at the same time. This is that finish start relationship right here where once this activity finishes, this one will begin the same as with its successor right here. And so that's how you would schedule by using the Gantt chart. So now we can save the project and all of our activities and networks will have been scheduled. Now again, you can do this automatically by making sure that this box is ticked. And then when you save it, it will automatically schedule your activities and networks. So that was an overview of project system scheduling using the project builder. If you have any other questions regarding project systems or scheduling, please call one of our numbers listed here or visit our website at simple-sap.com.